Hello everyone, welcome to Onion Skin. And we're continuing our drawing series in Toon Boom Studio on creating this domesticated killbot with a variety of different tools and techniques in Toon Boom Studio. Uh, we've covered manipulating stuff with rectangles and the like um, using the polyline. And now we're gonna be getting into the pencil, the first free line, oh, sorry, freehand uh, drawing tool. The way it works is exactly the same as what we've seen with the others. It draws a line, uh, the vectors will appear down the center of it, if that makes sense. So there's the first line, if I select that, um, we can pick it up, we can manipulate it and move it around all the same way as everything else. If we draw a few pencil lines like this, they exist as independent shapes. So I can still pick them up and move them around like that. If I do a different color, and then draw a few more on top like that. They're still independent. I can pick up this blue one and move that. And you see that they tend to stack in the order that I drew them in. So these red ones, they are existing on top of the blue. The blue ones I can rotate and change the size of those. Uh, and they stay underneath. If I select one of these lines with the contour editor, the white arrow that we used at the start, you can see that it has points in it just the same as the other. This one only has two of them, which is frankly surprising to me. Normally there's quite a lot of them. If I draw another line, let's see how many this one turns out with. Uh, there we go. So there's quite a few more here. There's, you know, there's one there, one there. Uh, so it can make lines a bit more crooked, but that's just because um, Toon Boom is trying to create a shape that is as close as possible to what your hand did. Um, so it tends to put a lot more data in there. If you want to go back and refine it more, you know, you can select lines and, you know, delete the points and stretch it out again as, as you would. Uh, so it works the same as, as all that. Other things you can do with pencil lines, um, which provides quite a bit of flexibility, and it works with the, all the other lines that we've made so far as well, uh, is that they're made using a stroke. What that means is if we were to select them and make it really, really big, or make it really, really small, you see the lines themselves actually stay exactly the same thickness they always were. So, you know, this arm is much smaller than it was, but those lines are still the same as those. This line is much bigger, still the same as those. Uh, so that's a tremendous advantage if, you know, you've drawn a piece of art and then it animates closer to the camera or further away. Um, it's not gonna mess up your line thickness. More so, uh, you have a lot of control over the line thickness. Down here in the pen panel, if you start messing with these meters, you can see what's happening there. The arm's getting really thick. Or well, we can make it crazy thin, like, you know, so thin that it's invisible. <laughs> so that's something that the pencil does that the brush cannot. Um, brush we'll be getting into in another video. So, pencil tool, here we go. You'll notice that on nearly every stroke, I'm probably likely to undo and attempt it again, such as the nature of drawing. So if you notice yourself doing that, you know, not being able to get the line right and having to do it like five or six times, eh, don't beat yourself up if you're new to drawing. It's very common for anyone ever no matter where they are in their journey drawing stuff a thousand times will never be a thing that goes away uh, so get used to it Ugh. <laughs> things like these spikes and shoulder pads is something i would normally opt to do with the line tool just because gross <laughs> for that reason uh, you tend to get a lot more control over them however the pencil is faster because you're just straight up drawing it at the risk of things being a bit messier but hey if you're animating frame by frame people won't really notice because you're going to be drawing 12 or 25 or so drawings to get one second of footage 
But if you're going to be doing tween based animation, which is when you know you do one drawing and then kind of puppeteer it around the stage, it can be worth putting the extra effort in to make that drawing look really, really nice because you know consider how much screen time it gets. People are going to be looking at that one drawing for minutes at a time without it changing. It's just kind of sliding about. But if it's appearing on screen for one twelfth of a second, not as big of a deal. It really comes down to how much time you want to invest into a project. If you're working on your own on a little, you know, just internet thing for fun, or if you're working on like a feature film for the cinemas. Uh, if you are working on a feature film for a movie, why are you watching this? <laughs> Probably know how vectors work. Maybe, unless you've worked traditionally all the time. I'm rambling. There we go. That arm's all done. Lovely. And it's not too gross by comparison to the other one. Yeah, that'll work all right. Lovely. So, stage pencil tool done. Join me next time for the brush tool. What's the difference between a pencil and a brush? Why would you use one over the other? Many reasons. Many, many reasons. Check back for that.